So this is the uh, event workshop for Bungie Drop. This year, it is a Division C event. Um, but yeah, so a little bit about myself. I competed for the Westminster Schools in Georgia. I'm now a Georgia Tech undergraduate pursuing a uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering, graduating in 2026. Um, I competed in high school style for four years. Now I've helped with over 20 plus tournaments, I believe. And I am the science lab Olympiad at Georgia Tech built, or one of the science Olympiad at Georgia Tech built directors. So a little bit of background on, or a little bit of a agenda for the meeting today. Uh, I'll first go over the rule sheet, some of the physical principles that are uh, inherent to this event, some of the common designs, some tips I have, and then some free resources. So <clears throat> starting off with the rule sheet, the main thing here with this build event is that the device is an elastic cord, which you are providing. And this has to meet a certain elasticity test stated within the rules. Basically, a one meter sec the bottom one meter section of your device must be able to stretch to 1.25 meters, given uh, when a 500 gram weight is hung. And the goal here is to have your device uh, be as close to the bottom of the ground as as possible without touching when it is dropped from the top of the testing device. And the weight will be, be, be between 500 and 300 grams and is the same between all your drops. However, the distance can be between two to five meters or five to 10 meters, depending on what level of competition you're at. And also the Drop heights will be the same for regional levels, but will be different for state and <laughs> excuse me, national levels. There is a hard penalty for uh, touching the landing surface. So that's one thing I'll touch on a little bit later. And this year there is, <laughs> is a bonus multiplier for uh, getting within a certain uh, distance to the landing surface. And given that you're allowed to try another drop at a different height or the same height, depending on the event supervisor. And if you're within a certain distance of the landing surface again, you get a multiplier. So to go over some of the physical principles for this event, uh, you can find more detailed math specifically for this event on the Sally.org wiki, but I'm just gonna cover a basic very simplified version of it. So each spring, each elastic cord, they all function the same. Even solid materials, they all have a modulus of elasticity. They're all able to stretch a certain amount, just some are able to stretch further than others. So this event centers around that. And to essentially experimentally determine that for your device because it's very hard to have an empirical formula for this. So you're going to experimentally determine this. One thing too is that it's quite, in the real world, it's not that simple. So at least when you're testing your device, it will differ by height. So I recommend testing at multiple different heights to try and figure out your K value, your lambda value, etc. But at the very center of this event, you might be familiar with these two equations, but there's F equals K times X and F equals N times G. And what you're trying to essentially do is balance these. So here on the right, I have a free body diagram if you're familiar with these, but essentially your spring force will be pulling up and the force of gravity is pulling down. And at equilibrium, these are constant, but at the very bottom, they're not. One thing, is for example in your f equals k times x your x is your equilibrium position but equal to uh, one half times your very bottom distance to cover some of the uh things that you'll do on competition day too uh it is an impounded event so don't for her forget to do that and additionally, you'll be using your logs and basically all the testing that you've done to determine where along the cord to drop from. So this event centers around a lot of testing and not necessarily your design. 
but to talk on the designs a little bit. This is just the ones that are provided by Science Olympia, so you can find this on their website. But when you're testing, you essentially want to have a device where you're able to repeatedly drop it from consistent heights and consistently measure it. So I must likely use like a slow-mo video to see what the very bottom of the drop is, and you'll be pulling it from certain distances. To touch on the first of the main two designs, uh, credit to Bernard from Siley.org for this diagram, but one of them is a partially elastic uh, device. So this consists of both a part which is relatively non-inelastic, so like a string, a cord at the very top, and then at, at the bottom, you have your elastic part. This is so that you meet that elasticity requirement within the rules where the bottom is able to stretch up to 1.25 meters. And the second of the two designs is essentially the whole thing is elastic. So you don't have that relatively inelastic part of your device. Um, I would recommend going as fully elastic as possible as <laughs> using a partially elastic device will subject your elastic part of it to quite a lot of strain, which can cause problems with repeatability and how consistent your device is. So to touch a little bit on the materials that you can use, so the most common one will be sort of tan super sport rubber. This is similar to what is used within flight events, so helicopter this year, for example. And I would recommend the bigger the cross section, the better. So basically, the thicker your rubber is, the better, because that will allow your device to be more repeatable and more consistent. And additionally, it will allow it to resist permanent deformation a lot easier. So for example, if you try using a slinky, I would very much not recommend that because that's a very weak spring and it's likely to not return to its original shape. To touch on a little bit of, I guess, more nuanced things that you will see when you compete a little bit more, one thing is that the temperature and humidity of your testing room and competition room can differ. And this can cause discrepancies between your testing and when you run the actual event. So there are some resources online. You can just Google how temperature affects the elasticity of rubber, for example. But there are ways to stabilize this. So for example, you can, most, most times room temperature is relatively equal, but humidity will differ. So when you try and test your device, you can always try and store it within a desiccated environment. So using like silica gels, for example, and pulling it out right before you test. Same goes for when you run the actual competition. Additionally, you'll find that springs will stretch out over time. So this includes rubber, because essentially everything is a spring. So because of this, uh, it's important to keep that in mind when you're doing testing and when you're competing. Additionally, your rubber slash springs will become less elastic over time. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So at a certain point, if you run your device enough, you might want to try rebuilding it, or there's certain other ways around this within the math that are also covered on the wiki. But yeah, so some additional resources are just the wiki and, and uh, the Science Olympiad website in general. But yeah, that covers all of the main principles I wanted to cover. Are there any questions? Uh, something in the chat. So the cost of the materials for this event, oh, I guess I could touch on that too. Um, I forgot to mention this, but for material choice, it really doesn't matter. If you find a material that works for you, the most important part is just testing and gathering that data and being able to have enough data to draw upon 
than when you do your math for actual competition day. The cost of materials itself would be less than ten dollars around. Although if you do have to build a testing device, that could rise up to around, I would say thirty, I believe. Um, so the question is, how do skills from other build events transfer over to Bungie Drop? So I would say that a lot of the same practices that you use within flight events, for example, when dealing with elastic materials, also transfer over to Bungie Drop. So A, uh, be careful with them. If you do snap any spring, um, it does hurt quite a bit, so be, be safe around that. Additionally, there are practices within flight events with, for example, uh, lubricating your uh, rubber bands and stuff like that. And I would say the same applies to bungee drop. So you want to make sure that you don't dry out your rubber bands because that will cause cracking and eventually failure, which is not good and also does not keep your results consistent. Um, and also just the same as basic skills from other events with logging and testing and iterating where Really, every event in Sile just comes down to how well you know your device and how well you've tested it. So what can you do if you're not familiar with the physics equations used in Bungie Drop? Um, the A, one thing I did within high school, and I would say a lot of people can do is just go to their physics teachers. I'm sure they'll be more than happy to help. Um, two is there you can uh, use other things like ChatGPT, et cetera, to try and understand the equations more. and. Uh, I never put them in here fully, but third is uh, trying to read up on basically how springs or a Hooke's law is what governs a lot of springs at a very basic level. And two, the force of gravity will always be the mass times gravity. So there's a website called Hyperphysics which covers a lot of good physics concepts if you want to go more in depth on how they work. Um, but yeah, initially, if you do get stuck on some of the equations on the wiki, um, there are people within the Discord servers who are in the Science and Olympiad com uh, community who use these equations a lot, who I'm sure would be more than happy to help as well. Uh, and same goes for how to teach yourself these things too. So um, I recommend like hyperphysics. Wikipedia is honestly an amazing resource. Um, if you really want to get into, or a lot of things are simplified at this level, but if you really want to get into it more, uh, you can get like <laughs> a mechanics of deformable bodies textbook if you want, but that's not necessary. So another question is, how do you approach demonstrating the build at competition, which can be stressful? Um, I agree with that. So come competition day, first things first is don't forget an impound. Um, a lot of teams will forget an impound. So by just doing that, you already have a step up. Additionally, uh, I guess on the more event specific side of things, A, uh, do not really, really err on the side of uh, caution when 
during your drops to try and not hit the landing surface because that will penalize you a lot more and you will gain a lot less than just if you simply drop from a little bit higher and then go as low because you do get a half. You essentially double your score um, if you hit the landing surface, which is very bad. And additionally, I just take a deep breath too, because by the point you've come to the competition, you will have done a lot of testing. You will know your device very well in theory. So you just have to trust the process. Second, two, is you can run a mock competition at your school, at your home. So basically have a friend suggest random distances, random weights for you to try, and then we'll check that you're able to use the formulas and your data to work backwards to determine how much you need to clamp up on your device for it to drop the right amount. So another question is, what is a good time to start working on your build before the competition and how you should schedule your preparation? So ideally, the way I would say it is you start to give a sort of very easy, non-condensed timeline, you start a month out. The first week, you work on gathering materials and building your device together. The second week, you're doing a bunch of testing. So making sure that you're able to get that constant, that spring constant where your modulus of elasticity. And third week, you're testing, basically doing mock competitions to make sure that you're able to work backwards. And the fourth week there is just for buffer in case things go wrong, your device breaks. So that way you're able to order new materials, you're able to get things on time, or you need to adjust things, et cetera. Yeah, so relatively short workshop, but if no one has any more questions, uh, the recording will be posted along with the slides, maybe, not too sure, but uh, feel free to reach out to me also if there's any questions as well. But yeah, thanks to everyone who attended.